The setting is Carl and Simone's suburban home, nestled in a quiet, upscale neighborhood that gives off an air of calm perfection. The sun dips low in the sky, casting a warm, golden light over the well-manicured lawns and pristine sidewalks that line their street. The home is as impeccable as the rest of the neighborhood, modern furniture, stainless steel appliances, and a clean, minimalist design. Everything appears in its rightful place, yet Carl feels like his life is slowly spiraling out of control. Carl, a 35-year-old mid-level manager at a rapidly growing tech company, sits alone at the dining room table, nursing a half-empty glass of whiskey. His fingers trace the rim of the glass as he reflects on his five-year marriage to Simone. It used to be different between them, passionate, loving, full of shared dreams and intimate moments. But now, those memories seem distant, blurred by time and recent events. Simone, 32, is a secretary at S&G Funds, a hedge fund company that has consumed more and more of her time over the past year. What began as a strong, trusting relationship now feels hollow, wrapped in the motions of everyday life. She arrives home late from work, often too tired or too distracted to talk, and when she does engage, her responses are brief, mechanical. Carl tries to suppress the gnawing feeling in his gut, the sense that something has shifted between them. He tells himself it's just work stress, that Simone's demanding job is to blame for the growing distance between them. But there are too many little signs he can't ignore, the way she smiles at her phone when she thinks he's not looking, the unexplained absences on weekends, and the increasing number of late nights. When he asks her about it, she dismisses his concerns, claiming the pressure at work is overwhelming. Still, the unease lingers. The tension in the house is palpable, like a thread pulled too tight, waiting to snap. It's a typical Tuesday evening when Simone casually mentions the upcoming company Christmas party. It'll be boring, she says, her voice light and indifferent. Lots of schmoozing with the senior partners, nothing you'd be interested in. She smiles faintly but her eyes betray a flicker of something else, something guarded. She suggests he skip it this year, reminding him that last year's event was a complete snooze fest. Carl nods, trying to act nonchalant, but his suspicion grows. Why wouldn't she want him there? The thought nags at him. He decides to brush it off for the moment, but it plants a seed of doubt that begins to fester in his mind. He can't shake the feeling that something is wrong, something bigger than just work stress or the wear and tear of a long-term relationship. The company party is only a few days away, and though Carl has never particularly enjoyed attending them, he begins to reconsider. A few days later, Carl's phone buzzes on the kitchen counter while he's making coffee. He picks it up and glances at the screen out of habit, only to realize it's not his phone, it's Simone's. The text on the screen catches his eye, preparations are in place for Friday. Looking forward to it. It's from a number he doesn't recognize. Carl feels a jolt of unease. The message is vague, but something about it feels off. Preparations? For what? He scrolls up to see more of the conversation, but there are no previous messages from the number. Still, the wording nags at him. He sets the phone down, but the suspicion has already taken root, spreading rapidly through his mind. When Simone gets home that evening, Carl casually brings up the party again. So, what's the deal with this Christmas party on Friday, he asks, watching her closely. You really don't want me to go? Simone pauses, just for a fraction of a second, but Carl notices. It's just going to be boring, Carl. Trust me, these things are all about networking, and I don't want you to be stuck there while I'm talking business with the senior partners. Her answer sounds rehearsed, and Carl's suspicion deepens. There's something she's not telling him. He presses further, keeping his tone light. I don't mind coming along. I'll just hang out and have a drink. Besides, it might be fun to see your colleagues in a different setting. Simone's smile tightens. Really, it's not necessary. It's not going to be fun for you, I promise. You'd be bored out of your mind. Carl decides to push past her attempts to dissuade him. I think I'll come anyway, he says trying to keep his voice casual. I could use a night out. For a split second, Simone's face stiffens, as if she's struggling to maintain her composure. 
Then, just as quickly, she recovers, giving him a strained smile. If you really want to, she says, her voice too light, too controlled. But don't say I didn't warn you. Carl can sense her unease. His decision is made, he's going to the party, no matter what. His gut tells him there's more to this than Simone is letting on, and he needs to find out what it is. For the first time in their relationship, Carl feels a shift within himself. The trust he once had in Simone begins to unravel, replaced by a burning curiosity and suspicion. He isn't content to sit back and be kept in the dark anymore. Something is going on, and he's determined to uncover the truth. The night of the Christmas party arrives, and Carl's determination is resolute. Simone had barely spoken to him all day, her silence only deepening his suspicions. Dressed in a sharp suit, Carl drives them to the upscale venue where SNG Funds is hosting the event. As they pull into the valet, Simone fidgets with her phone, sending quick texts and barely acknowledging Carl's presence. The ballroom is grand, lavish decorations, twinkling lights, and a live jazz band playing softly in the background. The party is anything but boring, and Carl notices how easily Simone slips into the crowd, greeting her colleagues with a practiced smile. He stands by her side for a while, nodding politely as she introduces him to various faces he's heard about but never met. Senior partners like Ben and Dale, men Simone often mentioned in passing, are among them. Both greet Carl warmly, though there's a strange familiarity in the way they interact with Simone, too much familiarity. As the night progresses, Carl becomes increasingly isolated. Simone mingles freely, laughing and chatting with others, her attention drifting farther from him. She doesn't check in with him, doesn't suggest they grab a drink together, and Carl can't help but notice how she gravitates toward Ben and Dale, spending more time with them than anyone else. Carl's discomfort grows into a sick feeling in his stomach. He takes a seat at a table near the back of the room, nursing a drink and watching as Simone moves around the room with ease. She's always been social, but this is different. She's animated, too at ease, and Carl can't shake the feeling that there's something beneath the surface, something he's not seeing yet. Then, he sees it. Out of the corner of his eye, Carl catches Simone slipping away from the main crowd. She doesn't head for the restroom or the bar, instead, she disappears through a side door with Ben and Dale. Carl's pulse quickens, the blood rushing in his ears as he sets down his drink and quietly follows them. The door leads to a private patio area with a hot tub, secluded from the rest of the party. Carl watches from a hidden vantage point as Simone laughs softly, her arms brushing against Ben and Dale's in a way that makes his stomach turn. Within minutes, the three of them are in the hot tub, drinks in hand, their closeness unmistakable. Carl's breath catches in his throat as he pulls out his phone and starts recording. He feels his world shatter as he watches them. Simone, the woman he married, is here in front of him, betraying him in the worst possible way. His hands tremble as he zooms in, capturing every detail. He doesn't confront them, doesn't storm in and make a scene. Instead, he quietly slips back into the party, his mind racing. His worst fears have been confirmed but he's too numb to react just yet. Over the next few days, Carl spirals into an obsession. He goes through Simone's phone when she's not around, digging through her emails and messages. What he finds only confirms what he already knew, the infidelity wasn't a one-time lapse in judgment. Simone's been involved with multiple partners for over a year, using work parties and client meetings as her cover. The more Carl uncovers, the angrier he becomes. He listens in on her hushed phone conversations, catches glimpses of her texting late at night, and even tracks her movements outside of work. Every new piece of information tightens the knot of betrayal in his chest. Simone's behavior shifts dramatically. She starts acting more affectionate toward Carl, as if trying to make up for something. She's suddenly warm and attentive at home, but her public coldness persists. Carl sees through the facade, her guilt is palpable but it only fuels his anger. He can't stand how easily she shifts between warmth and deception, as though her double life is normal, as though nothing has changed. Carl feels trapped, torn between confronting her with everything he's uncovered and silently suffering while he plans his escape. 
Their life together, the house, the finances, their social circle, suddenly feels like a prison. Every interaction with Simone is a painful reminder of her betrayal, but Carl can't bring himself to act yet. He's not ready to let go of the life they built, even as it crumbles around him. The emotional weight becomes unbearable. Carl spends his nights lying awake, replaying the events over and over in his mind, his thoughts swinging wildly between self-blame and bitter resentment. He wonders how he missed the signs, whether his own neglect of their marriage pushed Simone away. But no matter how much he reflects, the truth remains, Simone has betrayed him, and their marriage will never be the same. As days pass, Carl becomes increasingly consumed by the dual reality of his life. At work, he tries to maintain his composure, leading meetings and handling projects as if nothing is wrong. But inside, the storm is raging. Every glance at Simone fills him with both anger and despair. Their shared home, once a sanctuary, now feels like a battleground where unspoken truths lurk beneath every polite conversation. Simone's behavior complicates Carl's emotions even further. At home, she has become unusually attentive, cooking dinners, leaving sweet notes, and trying to engage in conversations about their future. But every act of affection feels hollow to Carl, like a poorly veiled attempt to cover up her guilt. He begins to wonder if Simone even regrets her actions or if she's simply playing a role to keep him from discovering the full truth. Carl is torn. Parvin wants to confront her, to demand answers and force her to explain why she's been unfaithful. But another part of him, the part still clinging to the life they've built together, hesitates. What if he's partly to blame? He's been so focused on work, on climbing the corporate ladder, that maybe he neglected her, failed to notice the cracks in their marriage. Maybe, in some twisted way, Simone's infidelity is a cry for help, a desperate bid for the passion they've lost. But Carl knows these are just excuses. The truth is, no matter what led them to this point, Simone made a choice, a choice that shattered the foundation of their relationship. Still, he can't decide what to do next. Should he fight for their marriage, confront her and try to rebuild from the ashes, or walk away and leave her to face the consequences of her actions? Simone's behavior outside the house presents a stark contrast to her newfound warmth at home. In public, at work events and social gatherings, she maintains the same distant coldness that first sparked Carl's suspicions. She brushes him off, seemingly more concerned with her career and colleagues than with their marriage. Every time Carl sees her slip into these social roles, it drives him deeper into his internal conflict. How can someone who pretends to be so caring and loving at home be so detached and indifferent when it truly matters? As the days stretch on, Carl becomes more obsessive in his search for answers. He can't stop digging through her personal belongings, her emails, text messages, even her credit card statements, looking for more evidence, more proof of her betrayal. He's become a man possessed, unable to stop until he uncovers the full extent of what Simone has done. And with every discovery, his resentment deepens. His emotional turmoil is mirrored in sleepless nights where his mind replays every interaction with Simone, analyzing every gesture, every word for hidden meaning. He starts to question everything. Did she ever love him, or was it all a performance? Was their marriage just a convenience, something that could be tossed aside the moment Simone found something more exciting? One night, as Carl lies awake, staring at the ceiling, his thoughts spiral into dark places. He thinks about revenge, about hurting Simone in the same way she hurt him. But every scenario feels empty, unsatisfying. No matter what he imagines, it won't change what she did. It won't fix the broken pieces of their life. Caught between anger and grief, Carl finds himself retreating inward. He avoids friends, skips social gatherings, and spends his free time alone, brooding over the weight of his decision. He knows he can't live like this forever, something has to give. But the question remains, does he confront Simone and demand answers, or does he let her continue with the charade while he plans his exit? Every moment with Simone now feels like a test of endurance, a waiting game to see who will crack first. Will she confess her affair, overwhelmed by guilt, or will Carl be the one to break, spilling all the evidence he's gathered in a final confrontation? Carl can no longer hold back. 
the weight of Simone's lies presses down on him, suffocating any semblance of normalcy they once had. It's a quiet Saturday evening. The house is eerily calm, with only the soft hum of the refrigerator and the distant sound of the television filling the space. Simone is in the kitchen, preparing dinner, acting as if everything is perfectly fine. But Carl knows tonight will be different. His heart pounds as he sits in the living room, fingers tapping against the armrest. He's waited long enough, collected enough evidence to confront her, and tonight he's going to unleash the truth. His mind is made up. He won't hesitate or back down. He grabs his phone and, with a sharp breath, stands up, walking toward the kitchen with purpose. Simone looks up from the stove, giving him a smile that seems painfully artificial now. Dinner's almost ready, she says lightly, as though they were any normal couple, living a normal life. But Carl is done pretending. Without a word, he pulls his phone from his pocket, opens the video of her in the hot tub with Ben and Dale, and slams it down on the counter in front of her. The sound of the phone hitting the granite counter echoes through the room like a gunshot. Simone's smile falters. Her eyes flicker to the phone, and as she watches the video play, the color drains from her face. For a moment, there's silence. Then, she lets out a nervous laugh, weak and unconvincing. Carl, this, this isn't what it looks like. Isn't it? Carl's voice is low, trembling with the anger he's been holding back for weeks. You think I'm blind? You think I'm an idiot? Simone takes a step back, her hands shaking as she fumbles for words. It, it was just, just fun. It didn't mean anything. Carl's fist slams down on the counter, making Simone flinch. Fun? Is that what you call this? Sneaking around, lying to my face, disrespecting our marriage, that's fun to you? Simone's eyes widen in fear as she sees the fury in Carl's expression. For a moment, she's speechless, searching for something to say that could possibly defuse the situation. Carl, I. But Carl doesn't let her finish. You think I didn't know? You think I didn't see what you were doing all these months? He paces the kitchen, his movements sharp and erratic, his anger building with every step. The late nights, the phone calls, the work meetings. I gave you every chance to come clean, Simone. Every. Single. Chance. Simone takes a shaky breath, tears welling in her eyes. I'm sorry, Carl, I, I made a mistake. I wasn't thinking. It was just, it was exciting, and I felt. You felt what? Carl cuts her off, his voice rising. Bored? Lonely? Is that what this is? Because I wasn't entertaining enough for you? Simone reaches out, trying to touch his arm, but Carl jerks away, his body tense, vibrating with the energy of barely restrained rage. Carl, please, don't do this. It was a mistake. I love you, I do. I... I wasn't trying to hurt you. Carl lets out a bitter, humorless laugh. Love? Don't talk to me about love, Simone. You don't know the first thing about it. For the first time, Simone's calm facade breaks completely. She begins to cry, her voice trembling. Please, Carl, let's talk about this. We can fix it. I know I've been wrong, but we can work through it. I don't want to lose you. But Carl is unmoved. He reaches up, pulls off his wedding ring, and hurls it across the room. It clinks as it skids across the floor, rolling to a stop near the fridge. Simone gasps, covering her mouth with her hand. We're done, Carl says, his voice cold and final. There's nothing left to fix. You destroyed us. Simone steps forward, her face streaked with tears, desperation in her voice. No, Carl, please, just give me a chance to explain. I wasn't thinking clearly. I. Enough. Carl roars, his fists clenched in his sides. You had your chance. You had plenty of chances, and you chose this. You chose to betray me, to humiliate me. He strides past her, heading for the door. Simone chases after him, grabbing his arm. Carl, wait. Please. I need you. Don't leave. 
we can figure this out. I'll change, I swear. Carl stops and looks at her, his face a mask of pain and fury. You don't need me, Simone. You need the excitement, the thrill. And I'm not going to be part of your games anymore. Simone falls to her knees, sobbing uncontrollably. Don't leave me. Please, I can't do this without you. I'll do anything, just don't walk away. But Carl's resolve is ironclad. He looks down at her, a mix of disgust and sadness in his eyes. It's too late, Simone. You made your choice. Now live with it. Without another word, Carl grabs his coat and storms out of the house, slamming the door behind him. The sound of her crying fades as he walks to his car, his heart racing, his mind still reeling from the confrontation. For the first time in weeks, Carl feels a strange sense of calm wash over him. The betrayal still burns, but the weight of it has lessened. He's made his decision, and now, he can start to rebuild what she tore apart. The next few days blur together for Carl as he moves forward with his decision to end the marriage. The legal wheels start turning quickly, he contacts a lawyer, initiating the process of filing for divorce. He moves out of the house that once felt like a home, packing only the essentials and leaving behind the life they had built together. Each box he packs feels like a small step toward reclaiming control over his future, a future that no longer includes Simone. He stays with his friend, Jake, who offers a temporary haven away from the chaos. Jake listens without judgment as Carl vents, but even his words of support can't erase the emotional wreckage Carl is navigating. Every voicemail from Simone, tearful, pleading, desperate, only serves to fuel his resolve. He doesn't respond. Instead, he deletes each one after listening, his heart hardening a little more each time. At work, Carl throws himself into his responsibilities. The long hours and demanding projects provide a welcome distraction from the pain simmering beneath the surface. But late at night, when the world goes quiet, the betrayal cuts through him like a sharp blade. Despite his outward composure, Carl knows he'll need to deal with the emotional aftermath sooner or later. So, he makes a decision, he starts seeing a therapist. The sessions are difficult at first. Talking about Simone, about the life they had, and the man he thought he was, opens old wounds. But each conversation brings a sliver of clarity. The therapist helps Carl understand that his pain, though deep, will not define him forever. It's a long road, but Carl knows he has to walk it if he's ever going to move past the anger and the hurt. Simone's desperation only grows. She shows up at his office one afternoon, unannounced. Her eyes are puffy from crying, her once perfect composure shattered. She tries to corner him, pleading for another chance, but Carl remains distant. She sends long, apologetic letters, filled with promises to change, but Carl's trust is irreparably broken. He can't bring himself to even entertain the thought of reconciliation. The divorce proceedings are brutal. Simone fights for alimony, trying to hold on to whatever remains of the life they once shared. But Carl is determined not to let her manipulate him any longer. The final blow comes when Simone announces she's pregnant, claiming that it's Carl's child, hoping to sway him with the idea of family. But Carl, fueled by suspicion, demands a paternity test. Deep down, he knows the truth, and when the results confirm it, the child isn't his, it cements his decision to cut her out of his life completely. Simone's betrayal is final. There's nothing left to salvage. Carl walks away from the courtroom with a heavy heart, but a sense of victory. He won't be a victim anymore. He won't allow Simone to drag him down any further. He takes the majority of their assets, leaving her to fend for herself, financially and emotionally shattered. As Carl packs up the last remnants of his old life, he realizes that this chapter is finally closing. The pain is still there, but it's no longer overwhelming. He can breathe again. Slowly, he begins to reconnect with old friends, rebuild relationships that had been neglected during the turmoil of his marriage. He even allows himself to imagine a future where he's happy again, free from the lies and deceit that once consumed him. Carl knows he has a long way to go, but for the first time in months, he feels like he's moving in the right direction. 
the man who walked out of that house is different now, stronger, more resolute, and ready to reclaim the life he deserves. Months pass, and the dust begins to settle. Carl finds himself standing at the edge of a new beginning. The divorce is finalized, and with it comes a bittersweet sense of closure. He's kept the house, the one place that once symbolized the life he thought he was building with Simone. Now, it's a space for him to rebuild on his own terms, free from the weight of their broken marriage. Carl starts to find peace in the routine of his life. He invests more time into his career, taking on new projects and responsibilities that reignite the passion he had once lost. His focus sharpens, and with it, his success. The hours he used to spend brooding over Simone are now filled with purpose, and it feels like he's stepping into a version of himself that had been dormant for far too long. Therapy continues to be a constant in Carl's life, helping him untangle the complex emotions that linger after such a betrayal. Through it, he's learned to forgive himself for the doubts and self-blame he once harbored. The scars of Simone's betrayal are still there, but they no longer define him. They're just a part of his story, one that no longer holds him captive. Simone, on the other hand, fades into the background of his life. Her attempts to reach out have grown less frequent, and Carl has made peace with the fact that she is no longer part of his world. The paternity test that revealed the child wasn't his was the final nail in the coffin. There's nothing left to discuss, nothing left to fix. She made her choices, and Carl made his. One day, while running errands, Carl spots Simone by chance. She's sitting at a small cafe, her appearance disheveled and her face lined with the stress of a life that's clearly unraveled since their divorce. She looks worn down, a shadow of the woman she once was. Carl pauses for a moment, feeling a pain of something, not regret, but pity. He watches her for a second longer before turning away, walking down the street with no desire to reconnect. That chapter is over, and it's time for him to leave it in the past. Carl's focus is now on the future. He's rekindled old friendships, started traveling again, and even allowed himself to explore new relationships. Trust doesn't come easily, but he's learned to be patient with himself, knowing that true healing takes time. With every passing day, Carl feels more like himself, stronger, more resilient, and ready to embrace whatever comes next. The encounter with Simone only reaffirms the choice he made to walk away. As he steps back into his life, Carl feels a sense of peace he hadn't known in years. He's no longer defined by the betrayal, the anger, or the sadness. Instead, he's moving forward, stronger for having endured it all. Carl is finally free, ready to build a life rooted in trust, honesty, and the knowledge that he deserves far better than what he left behind. Two years later, Carl stands on the balcony of his new apartment, looking out over the city skyline as the sun sets, casting a warm glow across the buildings. The air is crisp, and the world feels alive with possibilities. He's come a long way since that night he confronted Simone, since the painful unraveling of their marriage. His life now is different, calmer, more focused. The apartment, smaller but full of light, is his own space, a reflection of the person he's become. It's filled with the things that bring him joy, artwork he's collected, books he finally has time to read, and memories of new experiences he's embraced since the divorce. Carl no longer thinks of Simone with bitterness. Instead, there's a quiet understanding that people change, relationships evolve, and sometimes, letting go is the only way to move forward. He no longer blames himself for what happened, nor does he dwell on the choices that led them down such a destructive path. The wounds have healed, and with them, Carl has found peace. He's in a new relationship now, one built on mutual respect and trust. His girlfriend, Jenna, is everything Simone wasn't, grounded, kind, and fiercely honest. They've taken things slow, both careful not to rush into anything too quickly. Carl has learned the value of patience, of building something meaningful without the weight of past mistakes dragging it down. As the evening deepens, Carl reflects on the journey he's taken. The pain, the anger, the betrayal, they no longer define him. Instead, they've become stepping stones, lessons that have shaped the man he is today. He's stronger now, more aware of what he deserves and what he can offer in return. Carl steps back inside, 
smiling to himself as he hears Jenna's voice in the other room, chatting with a friend on the phone. He's grateful for the peace he's found, for the life he's built, and for the knowledge that, no matter how dark things seemed, there was always a way forward. In the end, Carl didn't just survive the betrayal, he thrived. The shadows of his past no longer haunt him. He's free, content, and ready for whatever comes next. As he closes the door behind him, he knows that the future is his to shape, and this time, it's a future built on a foundation of trust, honesty, and unwavering strength.